Good everything. Alright guys, so today we're going to be going over Steamroll Array, or Steamroller on Free Code Camp. So, uh, I'm actually going to do this video a little differently than before, because I solved this, but because of the way that your code compiles on here, it wouldn't accept my answer. So I'm going to show you the way that I solved it first, before I essentially changed my code around a bit, and solved it a different way. It's essentially the same thing, just in various formats. So what we're trying to do is get rid of everything that is an array we don't want it to be nested like this and then we're going to add it to our own array so we should just have the one array with the values in it that's all we're trying to do so the way that i did it was i i created a simple for loop so for our i is equal to zero i is less than our r dot length i plus plus so this is going to iterate through the current array I had an if statement here that is going to say if it is not an array, so if array dot is array, so if it is not an array on the current value here, we're going to add, oops, excuse me, we're going to push to an array. So the way I did it was I created a global variable here and I used recursion. So this should work, and I even tested it on the um, the site Python Tutor. Uh, JavaScript will, will run through all the iterations, so you can see it that it worked there. But because of the way this is written, unfortunately, uh, the site that is, it doesn't it doesn't give you the check mark. So that's why we're going to be going over this in a different way. So all we do here is we want to go ahead and push to the array. So we're going to say one array dot push. R I. So you'll see right here. Cool. So uh, we add it to the array. Else, we want to use recursion. Go ahead and steamroll the array. Like so. And then we want to go ahead and return the one array. Now when we run that, you'll see that we get our value one, two, three, four. Unfortunately, this doesn't work because it's going to run multiple tests at the same time and then our array, it's going to get a little crazy. So I think if we run it again, oh, no, that seems to be working. Um, so yeah, you see that it's working. It, at the very least, we should get this checked off. Unfortunately, um, that wasn't what we did. So real quick, we did a global variable here. We then ran our array, passed in a, a parameter here, we iterated through that, and then if it was not an array, we added it to our global array. And if it was an array, we then recalled the same function using recursion, and we iterated through that array until it was done. So we, uh, we're, we're gonna use recursion, we're just gonna use it slightly different. Because uh, unfortunately, this won't make your code go through. But that's how I originally solved it. Now, let's go ahead and do this. So. What I ended up doing here was essentially using recursion, but unfortunately, I like my solution better. I, I think this gets unnecessarily complicated, but perhaps I don't understand it fully. Um, so uh, why it doesn't work, or why it works now, but it, they don't accept the answer. So yeah, um, we essentially do the same thing. We create an array. We're gonna go ahead and call it uh, one array again. So we're gonna create an array. It's not. It's not going to be outside our original function. And then what we want to do is just call the function we're about to create on it. So um, we're going to create a function called flatten. And we're going to pass in that argument. So let's go ahead and create that function flatten. So what does function flatten do? So function flatten is going to take in an, uh, an array like we did a second ago. We're then going to iterate through that array. And we can use a for each on this if we'd like to switch it up. And then we're gonna run a function on the item that's in here. So we'll go ahead and just call it R2. And let's go ahead and get our brackets right. And then within here, so this is basically the setup. Everything else concept wise is the same. So we're gonna say if 
if it is not an array, dot is array, our current R2, so basically our our our, our, our uh, brackets i from earlier, if it is not an array, we want to go ahead and push it to our one array. So I'm going to say one array dot push that value R2. Else, we just want to go ahead and flatten it again. Else, flatten R, R. And the reason that we do this originally is because right here is because otherwise our code won't run. So let's go ahead and run it. Max call size succeeded. Uh, this is R2, excuse me. And then we can go ahead and return R, R2 excuse me, our one array. All right, so now when we run this, you'll see, very nice, everything works. Now what would happen if we commented this out? It would never iterate through anything. Our one array would stay empty. So, hope you found this helpful. Again, this was a secondary solution. I kind of like, it's essentially, if you can kind of understand here and the fact that you need to re use recursion, this is the, the, the if else statement. If it's a if it's not an array if it is not an array we want to add it to something to hold that value else we want to then run our our function here so um, I just did it using recursion and this is kind of the same thing except a little more complicated and a, le a little less clean if you're um, just kind of new to the game so if you guys found this helpful as always don't forget to like and subscribe and support me on patreon I appreciate it a ton guys